Hello and welcome to the big picture. The results of the elections held to the five state assemblies, Bengal, Assam, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry, is still being analysed and the number crunching is still going on. However, even as the details come out and different parties try to interpret the results to their own advantage, the fact of the matter is BJP having made its foray into Northeast by being in a position to form the government with its allies in Assam is the big news. Of course, the return of Mamata Banerjee and Jalalitha also has great significance. However, the debacle faced by Congress in Assam and Kerala is certainly a matter of great concern for the party. What does all this mean to national politics in the coming time? How will these results affect various parties? And what does the strengthening of the regional parties mean? These and a whole lot of other questions require analysis. We will do it today with Zoya Hassan, Professor Emeritus at JNU and a political scientist, Ashok Tandon, senior journalist, Sanjay Kumar, director CSDS and a cephologist, Bharat Bhushan, editor Catch News, and Jayanta Goshal, editor Anand Bazar Patrika. Welcome to all of you. Ashok, uh, I'd like to come to you first. Has the, uh, no, there's no doubt that BJP is, is on a high. Everybody accepts that, you know, it is on a high. But do you think that the Bihar debacle has been compensated as far as the BJP is concerned? Well, of course. <clears throat> but uh, Girish, the thing is that in these elections, particularly Assam, Bengal, and to a great extent Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu, the vote percentage of BJP in, as compared with the Lok Sabha election has not only remained intact, but it has gone up also. So one factor which was being debated in this particular election, especially after Bihar and Delhi was, whether the Modi factor is still uh, relevant and the Modi wave as uh, the BJP used to claim. So that has not been dented. Uh, apart from the fact that they have won Assam, no doubt about it, but the vote percentage, which was being viewed as a barometer, whether popularity of Modi uh, has gone down or not. Uh, so therefore, these elections, that's what I'm saying, even in Kerala, where they have won only one seat, but the vote percentage, as compared with the Lok Sabha election, both in Tamil Nadu as well as in Kerala, apart from West Bengal, where I think Jant will uh, know better, it has not come down. It may be slightly plus or minus. Assam, it has, of course, gone down. So, therefore, uh, down. it has... No. Assam has gone down, you see. Slightly, marginally. But in, in the West fact... Bengal also gone down from, yeah. the, from the low but last... So, Lok Sabha. The, the speculation among the political pundits was that because that was a Lok Sabha election and because a Modi factor, the Lok Sabha BJP percentage was bound to be higher even in the states where so they don't so, have seats. So you're saying that so the Modi wave right. continues? Yeah. You no. say that the Modi wave continues? That is what I want to say. And, and Irrespective whatever, of the and, fact what the results in Bihar were. And Bihar results and Delhi before that yeah. has been overshadowed by yeah. what has happened now. Is that what you're trying uh, yeah, to say? Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Zoya? Zoya, would you agree with that? Is that is that the underlying yeah. message, message in this election that the Modi wave more or less, more or less, you know, plus or minus a few percentage points, continues. Well, you know, the, uh, these assembly elections are certainly very significant uh, going forward to the 2019 uh, Lok Sabha uh, elections. It surely indicates the way uh, the wind is blowing, and the wind is blowing in favor of uh, the BJP. And I certainly uh, agree with what you said in, the, in your introduction that BJP uh, forming a government in uh, the Northeast in Assam is very significant. Uh, but at the same time, I think the point about the Modi wave, I think we need to be, I would qualify that, because after all in Assam, uh, BJP has done well precisely because it learned a lesson from Delhi and uh, Bihar, where it did not name a chief ministerial candidate. Here it named Mr. Sonawal as a chief ministerial candidate. And I think it was, BJP was very wise in not pitchforking uh, Modi, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, let us say, against the incumbent uh, chief minister. In, uh, so I think that 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 seems to be uh, that seems to uh, have helped uh, the BJP. Now it is true that BJP's vote percentage is intact or may have gone up marginally. But you see, in India's first past the post system, there are two issues. One is vote percentage, and the other is the translation of vote percentage into uh, seats. Look at West Bengal. Uh, the vote percentage of uh, the CPM is much higher 
than that of the Congress. It's a, it's a difference of probably about 10 percent. But uh, the CPM is down from about 62 seats to 33 seats, whereas the Congress, uh, with much lower vote percentage, uh, has won uh, 42 seats. So I think we can only take this business of vote percentage only so far. But if we really want to take seriously uh, the absolute numbers of vote, then if we were to count the absolute number of votes uh, across the five uh, state assemblies, it would be clear that the quantum of vote that has gone to the Congress is much higher than that of the BJP, not to speak of the number of seats uh, that the Congress has uh, in the five assemblies is much higher than what, uh, the, uh, what the BJP has, because BJP has basically uh, 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 whatever, uh, about say, r roughly 60 or uh, odd seats in, in Assam. It has three in Bengal and it has one in Kerala. Uh, so now all that adds up to roughly uh, 65, roughly 70. 65. But the fact that Congress's vote, uh, the fact that con yeah, the fact that Congress's vote share is much higher, or the fact that its see a number of assembly seats is higher, can be no consolation for the Congress because clearly, uh, the, clearly the Congress is not just in terminal decline, decline, which of course it has been uh, for some time. But it almost looks like it is, uh, uh, you know, it stands terminated, so to speak. In some so I think we can't okay. make too much of this, uh, okay. you know, this cephalogical business of vote, a vote, a vote seat share. No, the okay. fact is that Congress is in really, really bad shape. We will come to that. We'll come to that, Zoya. But you made some very interesting observations there, Sanjay Kumar. Sanjay, you think that uh, you know what the Ashok Ashok Tandon's uh, argument that the Modi wave continues. Is, the, is that the underlying message? But, you know, Zoya made a very interesting observation. Now, in Assam, in, in Assam especially, that, that was the only state where BJP had any uh, reasonable chance of making it to power and which they have made. But they, did, they projected a chief ministerial candidate. Did that make a whole lot of difference? Uh, I would try to make a certain, uh, couple of points. First, you know, when we try and make comparisons of vote share, one has to be very, very careful. <clears throat> Zoya Hassan mentioned about the vote share of Congress and left parties in West Bengal. These are not, not to, uh, these two can't be compared because actually Congress contested far less seats compared to the left front. We, Congress contested roughly about 80, 85 seats and left front contested more than 200 seats. So it, left front is bound to get more votes compared to Congress. Uh, so that's one point. That's also about Assam. If we compare the vote share of BJP in, uh, in Assam in the Lok Sabha election and assembly election, these two points can't be compared because in the Lok Sabha elections, BJP contested all the seats in Assam, all the Lok Sabha seats, which means that it was contesting in all the assembly segments. In the present context, in the assembly elections, they were not contesting in all the, state, uh, in all the seats, roughly about 80, 85 seats, and they had given rest to their allies. So comparing, uh, comparing vote share of BJP in Lok Sabha and Assembly is not a reasonable comparison. Same applies to West Bengal when we are trying to compare vote share of Congress and, West, and the left. Now the main question about do I see Modi wave continuing? I think it would be an over-reading over of the results if BJP thinks that the success in Assam and the vote share going up in Kerala, but not in West Bengal. Actually, their vote share has gone down in West Bengal compared to the Lok Sabha election. But if we see that this is a big success for BJP, it is a reasonably good success for BJP. But I would say BJP would make a mistake if they read this as an endorsement to the policy of the central government. It is no, I think these elections were fought on local issues in Assam. They were up against Congress party, which was facing huge anti-incumbency of 15 years. So these were local issues on which elections were fought. This is no reflection of Modi wave continuing in India. Okay, that's uh, that's a very, I mean, you're, you're very emphatic as far as that is concerned. Uh, Bharat, how do you look at this? No, he made he made interesting point. He said, it, this is not an endorsement. I'm sure uh, Ashok will, uh, will have something to say about that. It is not an endorsement of what the national, you know, yesterday, the BJP leaders, after the results were, as soon as the results were coming out, were trying to say that this was an endorsement of the of what uh, the BJP government or the centre stands for, and also the BJP's ideology. You know, uh, Girish, you <clears throat> know uh, uh, as much as we do that uh, politics is a battle of perceptions. 
BJP will say it is an endorsement of uh, 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 Prime Minister Narendra Modi, that it is an endorsement of their ideology. Uh, why would they not say it? Uh, uh, they, they won't say it's an endorsement of Sarwan and Sonowal <laughs> or that it is an endorsement of uh, Ram Madhav. Uh, Ram Madha or, uh, or, or, creating, <laughs> or creating divisions uh, within Assam or uh, it's a, uh, a vote for building a wall uh, with the uh, India-Bangladesh border. But the fact is, you said, what will be the impact on national politics? Exactly. Clearly, the image of uh, Narendra Modi and the BJP has you know, got a boost. So has uh, 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 Amit Shah's image got a boost. After all, they were uh, on the decline after two successive defeats, you know, right. uh, uh, in, in Delhi, Delhi and Bihar. And in Bihar. Now, uh, they, they, it's a morale booster for the coming elections in Punjab, in uh, Uttar UP. Pradesh, in, uh, in Uttarakhand. And why shouldn't a political party make the most of it? You know, vote shares will be where vote shares are. But the fact is, the party seems to be on the upswing. Its trajectory is an upward trajectory compared to, uh, let's say, the Congress. So that is an impact it will make. And it will also show them, if they are smart, that their real challenge in future will come not from the Congress, but from the regional parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the, you know, uh, Jayanto, the regional parties. You know, I was looking at the... It, it, normally, we don't look at the, the, the national picture when we look at it. But, you know, uh, I was looking at what is the... Who, who is ruling which state? How many... You know, BJP rules is ruling in 10 states now. Congress in 7 states, out of which 3 of them are small... Actually, 5 of them are small states in Northeast and, uh, you know, Uttaranchal and Uttarakhand, uh, Himachal. Himachal and Uttarakhand, and <coughs> Congress in seven states, BJP in ten states, 14 different regional parties are ruling in different states. 14 different ruling parties, including the PDP in Kashmir with BJP, and now in AGP and others in uh, Assam. So, you know, Janto, it, it is actually the regional parties have, have gained hugely now. The our problem is that we uh, believe in a either or, or analysis. <laughs> that is, I think we can take a uh, moderate line <laughs> that it's a, actually multiple factors, they work together. Right. So the state factors, so it's a state election, so you have to delink with no, center. One, one second. Uh, sorry, so sorry, sorry, regional... sorry. No, sorry to intervene. I, I want you to respond to this also. It, it was very clear in these elections that Modi was not the, uh, you know, Modi. BJP very deliberately did not project Modi as the candidate like they did in Bihar or even in Delhi that, for that matter. Exactly. And because, that seemed to have worked. Because, because these five states also, they say for have. BJP, it's a non, they call non-base area. Even Assam, so they didn't a, do it. A, actually, Assam is also not a base area. It's not yeah. a Hindi heartland. So the, the, the traditionally South, East and North East, this is actually not non-base area of BJP. Now BJP for a... I mean, pretty long time, they want to be a pan-Indian party and they want to reach to the south when they own Karnataka. Now, again, Karnataka, they lost. So, actually, these areas are also, you know, the individual charisma with your regional activities. It's, it's, I think it's a, you cannot, you cannot uh, watertight compartmentalization when we analyze. So, the, you, you know, in Assam, Narendra Modi is still a factor. Because Narendra Modi went and uh, gave a lot of assurance of development. Because, because, and because. And from Kachar to Gohati, the road, these, that. So, this, you cannot, you cannot the say that it's also a... Also, migration issue. So, no, no, no. Migration, politics of polarization, uh, choice of uh, the chief ministerial candidate, uh, Hindu-Muslim uh, uh, approach. I mean, Muslim-dominated state, if there is a Muslim party... Is complementary for BJP. Exactly. That is also another aspect. That's so I, I, I want to say that it's a multiple factors working and work, and you cannot say that Narendra Modi is a zero impact in all this. That is okay. also, I think, oversimplification no, right, over yeah. of that. Yes, yes, Bharat. Okay. I agree with him. These are the reasons why uh, BJP would have won or not won. <clears throat> in, in this case, it won in Assam. It didn't win uh, in other places uh, because it didn't have the right issues, whatever. That's not the point. The point is that when once Congress loses Assam and uh, Kerala. Kerala and is limited to these small states except Karnataka, it ceases to be the pole of anti-BJP uh, exactly. forces. And that, those, that, that, that is, pole is moved now to regional, regional parties. parties. No, that right. is, that is right. a very important point. Ashok Tandon, you would, you would agree with that. That, you know, the pole has moved towards the regional parties. Congress is no more that anti-BJP 
poll which you know which will attract other parties around it would you agree with that and what does it mean for the bjp see <clears throat> i agree it is happening but uh, my uh, personal view is that the growth of regional parties in the last six decades has largely been due to the decline of a party like Congress. Right. It started from Tamil Nadu long ago. It went on and on. And to the extent that they had to play a junior role in, in Bihar as well as now with their arch rival left in West Bengal. So if that trend continues, I think uh, Congress will have to think about it because Congress is a party of more than 100 years old. If this continue to play second mm -hmm. fiddle... No, sorry, sorry to intervene. One of the senior leaders has said today, of the Congress has said yesterday and today also, that there is no, no more time to think, they have to act. They can't just... That is exactly, that is exactly <laughs> I'm saying. See, the, the growth of regional parties is largely due to the policies of the Congress. Because in a, in a federal uh, country like India, every regional party has a right to grow. There is no doubt about it. But it's time for the 100 years old party to think about it. How long they will continue to play second fiddle to regional parties and lose ground periodically? So I think if they do the same thing in UP, uh, I think that will be the end of the Congress party. So therefore, my view is, and I will, I will not hesitate to advise, that Congress should never try to compromise uh, just for limited gains. It should continue I'll to play the role of a national party no, and, let and, let and get, try to build the party. Let me, let me get Zoya in on this. Zoya has written a book on Congress yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on these yeah. things. So she I should have, I, I would like to have, know her views on this. Zoya, Ashok Tendon seems to be, uh, you know, uh, hinting, mm, yes. uh, saying that Congress you know, is, is decimating itself by trying to align itself with regional forces. You, do you agree with that? Well, the two most recent alliances, one in Bihar and the other in West Bengal, has given uh, seem to have benefited the Congress. Yeah. Congress was nowhere. Congress was nowhere in Bihar. And uh, it did reasonably well in an alliance. Likewise, uh, Congress has been the bigger beneficiary has been a beneficiary of this alliance with, uh, with uh, left. the left. Unfortunately, it's the left which seems to have lost out, uh, lost out on this alliance. So, so you see, the point is that uh, I think Congress has to think of its future, and I'm sure they're doing that, uh, that, uh, that thinking. Uh, and it's really not for me to uh, advise them. But, what, but I think I'd like to comment on the earlier point that was made about regional parties. I think it's quite true that there is a new phenomenon and a new development, and that is that... Uh, that uh, so far, in a number of states, the, uh, there was a bipolar competition between uh, the BJP and the Congress. And BJP seems to have had the upper hand in that uh, competition. Now, of course, in several states, with the decline of the Congress and the rise of regional parties, the BJP is going to face competition from regional parties. And m my own sense, uh, as we go forward, is that it will be harder for the BJP to take on, let us say, uh, Mamta Banerjee in West Bengal, or the the two DKs in uh, in Karnataka, or for that matter no, in, Tamil Nadu. in Telangana, the TRS and so on. Because you see, these parties, most of these party parties, it's very clearly uh, both in Tamil Nadu as well as in West Bengal have done well on a welfareist platform. Clearly, it's a welfareist platform. Whether we the media may call it freebies, uh, we, uh, academics may call it populism, but it is a form of welfareism which benefits distinct social groups and social constituencies. Okay. Okay. Now, the, the BJP is not known to have a welfare platform, and therefore it's going to be much harder for the BJP uh, to compete against this kind of uh, welfareism. Now, it will be developmentalism of uh, Narendra Modi against the welfareism of uh, regional parties. Okay. But it remains to be seen whether after this election the BJP is really going to pursue developmentalism or will it again be a double track of developmentalism on the one hand and divisive politics on the other. I'm you inclined call it, to think okay. that it's going to be uh, both and possibly uh, possibly more of the latter, which is divisive uh, okay. politics. Okay, you, know, you call it divisive <laughs> politics, but they call it ideo ideology. Ideological, uh, Dr. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay, you know, you see, because yesterday I, I was asking the same question to Bharat earlier, the BJP's victory, they see it as an, is a victory of their ideology. You think that is, that, is, that is how they will pursue this? Because somebody, you know, for instance, in, in Kerala, 
in Kerala, what is it that they can, can they pursue the same kind of Hindutva ideology in Kerala and succeed? That's the question. Or, can I just interrupt you for see, a moment? Yes, it is ideology. I don't see ideology. this victory. Just one one second. second, one second, ideology Sanjay. Ideology can be both inclusive and divisive. Okay. Okay, yes, yes, Sanjay. I was just saying that ideology, yes. Yeah, we got it, we got it, no. Zoya. Yeah, Sanjay, yes. I have a slightly different take on these election results. I don't see the victory of BJP in Assam uh, plainly, largely on the ideological issues. It is largely because there was an anti-Congress mood in a sense. Congress was in power for 15 years and there was a strong sense of change among the people. They wanted a change in the state, change in the government and the only, only alternative they could see standing in front of Congress was BJP and they opted for BJP. There was some attraction for the chief ministerial candidate as well as some attraction for Modi. But largely, it was a desire for change and that actually resulted into a large number of people voting for BJP. Uh, I don't see, uh, like in even in Kerala, I know that BJP voters didn't see BJP as a viable alternative. Uh, so people didn't come out in large numbers to vote for BJP. But I don't see this vote largely on ideological issues that people have actually voted on ideology. It is largely because, you know, a desire for change. Because even in Kerala, we know that the two alliances have been there for such a long time. And it happens in many states and it will start happening in some other state as well. Okay. There is a desire for change. There is always a scope for okay. emergence of a third force. Okay. That happened in Delhi some time ago. And right. this might happen in other states. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, one thing about... about uh, Kerala, everybody is talking about. I was, I was just doing some mathematics, arithmetic, and you know, in out of 124 seats that the BJP contested in Kerala, they have won in 57 seats. They have won more than 20,000 votes. It's not a small number. That that percentage is about over 10 percent. Just BJP with the alliance is 15 percent. They have they have they have 30 30,000 votes and more in 33 constituencies. In seven constituencies, they have 40,000 votes, more than 40,000. Two constituencies, they have got 60,000 votes. So, you know, in Kerala especially, they have emerged as a, as a third front, as a third force there. Uh, so, Ashok, what is, the, what is the next step that the BJP can take in, in, in a place like Kerala? Because considering, the, considering the, the way in which the population is divided. See, Girish, what was happening in the earlier elections was that the, at the last minute, the BJP supporters would tend to vote for the UDF to ensure the defeat of the LDF. Yes. Because they knew that the BJP is not going either win the seat or form the government. So that has been the trend in the last so many elections. And perhaps from the last Lok Sabha election, largely on account of the image of Narendra Modi, which emerged as a, as a leader, uh, they, they got encouraged to vote for the BJP in respect to the fact whether they win the election or not. And that is why I think the statistics which you are showing reflect that this time they did bother who wins, whether the LDF or the UDF, but we must vote for our own party and largely on account of that. And also, let's not forget, uh, Jayanta will uh, uh, explain it, that in West Bengal also, gradually BJP, is there's a 2% difference between the vote share of BJP and the Congress. Congress, that's right. So that's they right. are emerging that, that, as that, that, a force that, that, even in West Bengal. Absolutely, I agree with that. Would you agree actually, with that? Actually, yeah. Actually, uh, there is a debate. There are two things there is in a debate West Bengal that you want to address. Sorry, yeah. Jayanto. One is the, the emergence of Mamta Banerjee in so strongly now. What will impact at the national level she will have? Second thing is about this, what, he, what Ashok spoke about. No, I'm just, uh, yeah. One thing is that BJP's approach that whether <coughs> the independent growth of BJP without any coalition or regional forces and earlier it was an NDA culture and now the, the, to explore the independent existence. In fact, Joa also wrote in, his, in, in her book that Congress also earlier, the approach was the, uh, when the, we, we used to call brute majority Congress. Yes, yes. But after that, how Congress also landed into the coalition, coalition uh, uh, they approach. They were forced to. Yeah, th that famous Pachmari declaration. Exactly. Anyway, no, so this now, Shimla. now, yesterday also, I found Amit Shah in the press conference again and again. He was telling us that NDA, we will uh, go with NDA. So actually, you know, this, this approach is, a, there is a two-prone approach. The state BJP leaders, 
they think that we should fight against Mamta. And now, after this election, what the second question, your second question, that Mamta, I remember at Nitish Kumar's house at the lawn, I was there. On the day of oath taking ceremony, Rahul Gandhi was there and Mamta met Rahul. And Mamta said, Rahul. These are the Bihar elections you're talking about. Yeah, just, just after the oath taking ceremony of Nitish Kumar in the Bihar election, that, you know, don't go with CPM. She told she Rahul. told Rahul. But you know, now after this Congress CPM alliance, Mamta has a disappointment in the with the Congress, and now she cannot go to the NDA for 30% Muslim vote. But she is now just you you remember few days back, Trinamool MP shouted on this um, uh, uh, helicopter uh, scam like Subramanian Sami. So this is the change of Mamta's attitude. Okay, so so it, BJP it is, it is in the catch 22 situation that whether we will go with the Mamta in the Nash for national politics okay. before Lok Sabha election or the independent. What Ashok Tandanji is saying that the independent and growth of BJP is more important to uh, reach to the regional, uh, okay. should not be the B team of the regional party like Congress. Okay. So there is a, there is a debate. So there's a lesson which they seem to have learned from Congress. Yeah. Yes, yes, Bharat. No, what's the question? No, the, you wanted to say something. No, I wanted question. to say, I no, wanted no, to my, say. My, sorry, we, we're completely running out of time because they're not addressed this issue. The, the, the complete, you know, despite the fact that <laughs> they're one Kerala, the left front, the problem of the left front. What do you see? Where do you see the left front going from, from here? I see them uh, governing as they've governed in the past. Uh, they've had... Uh, no, but the debacle in West Bengal, how serious is it? How see, moral... How, what West, Bengal, be the... West Bengal was a debacle largely because the Congress and the, CP, uh, and the left, their perspectives are completely different. They're, you know, for 34 years earlier, congressmen on the ground have fought CPM uh, exactly. and CPI and exactly. uh, their allies. To, so their vote did not get transferred to the left, but left being an organized uh, Kadha-based party got their vote shifted to the Congress. So Congress was did that better the, was because that the of the left. Yeah, actually the disappointment of in the grassroots level. We, because we were being told during the campaign that the that the Gatband and the Jot or whatever it was being called, the Congress CPM alliance was working very well on the ground. No, no, very working well, very well because you know all the districts there is a tyranny. And the, all the workers, both the CPM and Congress, assaulted by the goons and the anti-socials. There is strong lumpenization in Bengal, political so violence. violence. So actually, the, it's, it's an issue of the sense of insecurity. They thought that if they unite, but you know, the general mass of Bengal, okay. the 36 years, the, the hatred against that r regime, still it is there. Okay. Zoya, yes, very quickly, Zoya. You know, on the uh, left front's uh, decline, yes. which is clearly a terminal decline in West Bengal, in addition to the reasons that your panelists have pointed out, I would say that the left uh, underestimated uh, some of the work that has been done by the TMC government in the last oh, right. uh, three to four years and some of the welfare measures. Two, I think their campaign was a very negative campaign. They did not really, I mean, their whole uh, idea was that this alliance will do the trick, whereas this alliance had to represent a narrative, and there was really no narrative, no alternative uh, that uh, that this alliance was offering. And I think this was another reason why uh, why they were not able to overcome uh, overcome uh, the differences which are already there. If they had tr if they had come together on the basis of some kind of common understanding, which should have been presented to the people as an alternative, they okay. didn't do that. Okay. Their Can't entire focus okay. was on Standing corruption between, of... Between uh, the uh, okay, and Ashok, and will come so on. Okay, okay. Uh, Ashok, very quick, Ashok, very quick last words to you. The challenge of the BJP from now on from here. For after, after this victory, what are the challenges? Till, till the <laughs> UP is the next big challenge. See, the thing is, in this country, we have always have elections, sometimes twice a year. <laughs> so every election is a challenge. So every party will have to gear up for the next election okay, now, every, okay. especially for UP, because UP, as everybody knows, is, is okay. a real challenge. Every party, every party has to gear up. BJP is, in a, is on a high, so it will gear up well. What the Congress will do is something which we'll have to wait and watch. It has, as some of my panelists said, has, has reached a terminal stage. Whether it will be able to overcome this terminal stage, we'll have to wait and watch. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.